has a lot of crashes in this uh, New Mexico area here, mm -hmm. about eight or nine recoveries from the early 40s or middle 40s on. The earliest one happened in 1945, the day after the surrender was signed on the battleship mm -hmm. over here at San Antonio of Wash, mm -hmm. where the old highway used to come through. Yeah. A man was coming back from a training mission in a B-29, flew over a, what looked like an airplane crash in a, in a wash, right short of the highway. Mm -hmm. He took a good look at it, called the control tower, and told them there's an airplane on the ground here. They made a search, said, we don't have any airplanes out there. So when he got back to the base, he jumped in his car and drove back. He found the crash right there, and, and there was uh, one live alien walking around confused in the area, and, and some others there that apparently were dead. And there were two Indian boys sitting on ponies watching. Mm -hmm. They had seen the crash come in and they were sitting there on their ponies watching to see what was going to happen. By the time he rode, drove back, they're still there. So they watched and uh, the, when the airbase didn't find that they had any missing airplanes, they sent a, a team out anyway to see what crashed. And they found this disc that had four bodies in it, three dead and one alive one. Mm -hmm. They took the live one to Roswell Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. The uh, Rick was in an initial investigation there, and uh, the uh, the Army recovered the residue. This was early enough, they didn't have a lot of this before that, so mm -hmm. the Army crew they worked on the recovery and crashed at 5 o'clock, they all quit and went to the bar to drink beer, mm -hmm. and they came back the next day, but they did take the live one with them, and uh, so they finished the recovery the next day, but the two Indian boys came back the next day too. Mm -hmm. They came back after the Army left dragged a big piece of the crap that was loose into a ravine and covered it with dirt. Mm -hmm. That one is still there. We're trying to get back to it now, but the rest of it was all recovered by the Army. Just over there, not too far from here. Yeah. But there, there, was, there was at least eight here that happened in the next ten years. Mm -hmm. there, there was that one, there was one that la came down uh, eight, or seven and two-tenths miles south by southwest of Socorro. It had four live beings in it. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the trap stubbed its toe coming into a wash on a, on a rift, flipped over on its back mm -hmm. against some rocks. The, the occupants were able to release themselves and, and they were hovering under when the army patrol arrived on the scene. The air traffic control saw it coming out of, in out of control and it appeared pretty close where it was going to land. They sent an army team out to close the highway so they could Cut it all off, and that one was recovered when the army went. The, the, the army was told when they sent the people out there to close off the area to just close off the area and don't do anything. Don't try to approach the craft. A team is coming out from Washington, mm -hmm. so a team arrived several hours later, flown out from Washington with a, a two-star general in charge, and and uh, so, some recovery people, and the army officer on, in charge of the scenes briefed the. General, when he got there, he said, uh, no, they haven't left the ship. They've been hovering under there all the time, and they're fearful of us. They seem to be. And they always clutch these rectangular black boxes to their breast. They won't, mm -hmm. They never let go of them. So the general turned to a, a sentry there and said, go get me one of those boxes. 